Hello fellow humans and patriots. Um, you can tell from the title of this video that this is going to be a little bit of a controversial and spicy video, uh, which is sad, honestly. Um, I have not hidden the ball that I am an advocate uh, against minor attracted persons, which is the politically correct term now that we use for the P word. And I won't be allowed to use the P word on this video because there's so much censorship around the topic. It is uh, mind blowing, really. So, but what I am talking about um, are adults that target and enjoy the sexual exploitation of children. Um, and so, you know, children are children. You can call them minors. You can you can give them whatever title you like, but they are children and they are to be protected. And we have a culture that has normalized and incentivized um, that type of behavior and has demonized those that try to push back on that type of behavior. I've experienced that myself when I ran uh, my congressional race. One of my main reasons for running was to unseat a Republican man who served our country but who also made public comments about having sex with children and everyone or i should say not everyone but a lot of people thought it was fine thought it wasn't a big deal i can't tell you how many people i met along the campaign trail that said oh, oh it's not a big deal or they had a, a reason for this or a reason for that that they could rationalize away that it's really not a big deal to normalize and to joke about um having sex with children so I think it's a big deal, which is why I'm doing this video and why I wanna bring some light to somebody that I believe is a hero. Um, this mother, you can read about her, you can read about her story. The, the series Snapped did an episode on her. I'm gonna put a link in the description below which details some of her story and also the fundraiser that I created for this woman. Um, but basically, over 21 years ago, uh, this woman had knowledge that this this 18-year-old man had uh, sexually abused one of her single-digit daughters, and she basically ended up taking his life. So he didn't die instantly, but he, the man ultimately died, and this is the reason that she did it. Um, and to me, you know, protecting our children and standing up against this kind of behavior, which I believe is the most egregious thing that can be done to a, to a child, perhaps the most egregious crime, right? Um, certainly any abuse of children, but in this particular way, I think is, is one of the most, if not the most egregious. I mean, it's one of the reasons that I tried to shed light uh, on the human trafficking, because that is, um, I'll have to be careful how many times I say that word as well, but that is just the, the re repeat and repeat and repeat offense, the same offense over and over and over again. Um, and it is it is despicable. And it should be held as, as like the highest, uh, most disgusting thing that a human can do to another. And I don't, I'm not promoting that we um, hate these people or torture these people. But I do think in many scenarios, it is humane to either put them in captivity for the rest of their lives, or to um, allow for a death penalty so that they can pass on to the next life. And I think that's actually the most humane thing you could do, not only for that, for that victim, for the victims, so that there aren't any more victims, but also for the perpetrator themselves. Because every study we have, any, any objective scientific evidence we have tells us that these people do not get better. It's like a 99.9%, .9 they don't get better. And many people wanna call it a, uh, a mental illness. Okay, fine, if that's true, and you're gonna be trapped inside your body that way, um, and, and you can only abuse you know, children, then maybe it's time for you to meet your maker and move on to the next and, and not be here to hurt children. But what this woman did, um, I think, was a very normal and natural mother bear instinct to protect your child and to make sure that something like that would never happen again. I mean, I just had something very, very minor, a very minor boundary push with my own child recently where someone thought that they were going to correct my child in public by sticking their hand on my child and then giving them a little scolding. Well, I don't so much mind the verbal scolding, you know, I'm, I'm all for a, com a communal, you know, it takes a village to raise a child. And if you see a kid doing something, you say something great, but we don't put hands on people and it made my child very uncomfortable. And so I had to I had, a, I had a decision as a parent in that moment. I could say, well, there was no harm, no foul. And, you know, I could give advice and say next time, you know, you tell them don't do that. But 
instead I wanted to give an example to my child, which is I'm going to, I'm going to protect you. I'm going to stand up for you. When somebody does something even minor, when they put their hands on you, even in a, in a minor way, that's not okay. And I'm here to protect you and, and let them know that they can't do that. And so that's exactly what I did. I went up to the person and let them know, Hey, you know, I appreciate you with the correction, but you can't put your hands on my kid. I don't care if it's a tap. I don't care. Don't touch my kid. Okay. And that that speaks volumes to my child as far as boundaries and what's okay and that your mother is going to protect you. And so that's obviously a very minor example in comparison to the way that this woman stood up to protect and care for her children. Um, But this woman went on to spend 18 years in jail. And uh, the parents of the man that committed the crime were petitioning for, for her to be murdered uh, as as retribution, and what's it's just crazy to me to see that this is this is the mindset of our culture where we will we will fight and stand up for the congressman that that jokes about having sex with kids, and we will not protect the mother that protects her own children, but we'll throw her in jail. And it was just very stunning to me as like a commentary on our on our culture, um, because truthfully, if more um, p words we're being offed, I think we might have less of it. I think, you know, when they say, oh, they can't control themselves, they can't control themselves. If we had real consequences, I'd like to see how many could start controlling themselves. I really, I I wonder if someone could do a study on that. Um, And so I found her story to be very inspiring on one hand, that that you had a woman who unapologetically stood up for her kid, but then very heartbreaking on another. Because in choosing to go with that primal God-given instinct to stand up for and protect her own child. She was ripped away from her children for, and she had more than one child, has more than one child, was ripped away from her children for 18 years and removed from society. Um, and you know, what's interesting is if she had, cause a lot of people will say, oh, well, you should have just gone to the police. Well, a lot of us know that's actually quite a joke and how oftentimes when we do go to the police or we do go to DCF, you know, there's, there's a lot of trouble there too. Not always, not, I don't want to make a generalization, but a lot of us know of personal stories where that's not really an answer, right? So we have a faulty, um, legal system and even the, the, they can turn around and take, and, and, you know, take the kids away from the, the parent that's actually in the right. So it's very like, um, it's not an attractive option, let's say. And there was something I learned in law school that they taught us that one of the reasons that we have remedies at law is so that we don't have lawlessness. So that people feel like um, if I go to my police officer or I go to the judge, well, I'll get a fair shake and something will be done and I don't need to take this into my own hands. But when we don't have that, people feel like they need to take it into their own hands to get justice. And so I would say that that's actually not too far off in a situation like this, because when you look at who actually gets convicted, right, of of the P word that's actually doing it, and then then even when you are, like even when you, when you, you, we say, okay, the evidence is there, you did this really bad thing, people don't spend the time in jail that they should. They, they don't spend the kind of time that, that, I mean, really, what kind of time could you possibly put, right? You, they'd have to be there for the rest of their lives um, or they would have to be executed. There's really there's really no punishment that that matches the crime when you've done that to a child, right? There just, it just, there isn't. Um, and so really the best we could do is keep them from hurting anybody else or put them out of their misery. So, you know, as far as justice goes, she, she made the best uh, choice as far as actually executing justice on this carnal earth, right? I and mean, we, all, we all meet our maker one day and we like to believe there's some kind of eternal justice on the other side, but we can certainly see with our own eyes what happens in this reality right here. And what we see is a lot of injustice when it comes to the P word. Um, again, even in our own Congress, we've got no accountability we can just make jokes about it, ha ha, funny, funny. Meanwhile, we have this mother who doesn't think it's funny and uh, has has taken justice into her own hands and then has been vilified for it. And that's what really got me about the story, which is why um, when it was brought to my attention by a dear friend, uh, we decided to create a GoFundMe to raise some funds for, um, I think she was let out, Chandelier Louder was let out in 
sometime in 2021, we started the GoFundMe page. I think it's only raised a little over $2,000, but the idea was to give her um, money for that first year of expenses and also uh, for any remaining court costs. So we, we did that and I actually had, surprise, surprise, I had trouble with GoFundMe where first they tried to shut it down and said that I was promoting criminal activity, which is just insane. Um, and we went through a big rigmarole war and then there were like logistical issues with them where we just had trouble getting in touch with them so that the money, because the money goes um, directly to Chandelier. It does not come to me, it goes directly to her. Um, and they, they just were really difficult to deal with. So I recently switched over to another platform and the link for that is in the description. I hope that everyone will share it if you feel so moved. Um, every little bit counts and does help. And I think it's really the least that can be done now for this mother um, is to just, I, I call it her second act. Like let's, let's give her a good second act. And by, when I say us, I mean the community. I mean for every person that advocates against this kind of abuse for children, for every person that advocates against trafficking of children, you know, we see so many ugly things out there that feel beyond our control. Well, here's something that's within our control. Here's somebody in the community that we can support who had a very natural instinct to protect her daughter and who acted on that instinct and then was vilified. Well, we as advocates, right, we can share this story. First of all, why doesn't this story get more publicity, right? Maybe if a few, uh, a few, I think, well, I always say, I think most of our world at this point is, is pedos once you start looking around the internet and the web and you see all these people that have been convicted, like that's just what we know of. It's almost like who isn't, right? Like uh, when you look h higher up the food chain, it seems like there's a lot of them. So, um, so yeah, if we want to push back on that, here's a really great way. And here's a great way to expose it. Like let's share this story so that some of them might get a little tip that, you know, hey, if, if I do this, here's some real world consequences. Like people are acting outside of the law to bring forth justice. Like we're not all scared, timid little women, okay? Some of us are prepared to fight and, and protect our children, to fight for our children and protect our children. So I think it has, um, it has some, the story has some oomph to bring that message across. But I think also it, it brings across this commentary on culture that we need to start having and looking at. And then we have an opportunity to be good to somebody that, you know, our community was not very good to. Our community said, you know, if you, you stood up for your kids 18 years in jail. So here's an opportunity for us to, to wrap around and help a woman um, who loved her children and I'm sure still loves her children. And an opportunity to help with a bountiful second act, as I say in the in the fundraiser statement. So for anyone that feels moved by this story, um, maybe you disagree, that's fine. You can find a lot of people, you know what? Go find Brian Mast, write him a little note. I don't need to hear it. <laughs> There's a lot of people that think that uh, the P word's no big deal and that, you know, execution is not an appropriate um, answer and and great and this is America and we're all entitled to our our opinions and if you want someone who agrees to you write your congressman but um, if you want to help help this woman out then please you know feel free to leave an encouraging um, note for her or donate doesn't hurt to donate so thank you for listening and God bless